It's midwinter here in Tasmania, and in my last video, I promised that I would bring you to have a look at the veggie garden and to see what it's like at its lowest point. And mid July, which it is here, midwinter, is certainly our lowest point. We had a couple of weeks ago lots of ice and frost, and then we've had over the last week. Uh, quite a bit of rain, I think about three nights, totaling about 55 millimetres of rain. So everything's really damp. The weather today is quite pleasant, though I think it's probably snowing in the mountains. However, growth in our garden at this time of the year is very, very slow because daylight hours have been really short and just beginning to lengthen, but we won't really see significant uh, growth occurring for about another month. What we're looking at here is the garlic, this is the true garlic and the elephant or Russian garlic in there um, that has now come through. This was grown up with weeds. I have been in and weeded it. It really needs to be mulched, but I'm going to wait until probably the end of winter before I mulch it because this way the ground will be a little bit warmer. If I mulch it now, it'll keep the ground a bit cooler. The bed at the back, you can see, is under plastic and quite a bit of the garden is like that now. It is a way that I can control uh, the weeds and keep that ready for the next crop. That will have broad beans planted there uh, next month. So probably three weeks to four weeks now I'll put broad beans into that patch and get that underway. But it's all ready to go. All I have to do is pull the plastic off and away it goes. Now much of the garden is messy this time of the year. It is not nice to look at. There is a lot of work to be done in terms of preparing it for spring. A lot of clean up still from summer to be done. Areas that really should be under plastic that I haven't got to cleaning up yet. While we often think of winter as being a quiet time, here in Tasmania it's really busy. I've been really busy over the last uh, two weeks now whenever I've had available time pruning fruit trees and I still have probably at least a day's pruning to be done before I complete the fruit trees. Uh, then there's still other things like the kiwi fruit, uh, raspberries and so on to finish pruning. So lots of work to be done and lots to be done over the next two months in preparation for spring. So when we come to the raised beds here, you'll see lots of weeds, but there is food here to be found. Most of it though is a product of early planting in summer or even in spring, some of it. Now what have we got? There is a little bit of kale here, not a lot. You'll see a couple of giant parsnips here that are really too big for eating that I dug out of this bed when I cleaned it up. Back in June I planted this bed and it's got snow peas which are just coming through the ground now and also some onions and spring onions in it. Now I don't really see the onions or spring onions yet but the snow peas at least have a start. Now I could have planted them a little bit earlier, I was a little bit late perhaps coming to get the snow peas in, but they will give us reasonably early uh, production. I generally don't plant anything in July. It's really not worth planting because it's going to be so slow to move. It's better to wait to August and then things will move a lot quicker. But there's natural germination that's occurring. You'll see late autumn here we had all this mustard greens that have come up. This is self-sown and there's also parsnips amongst it. There's too much mustard there for us to use, but anytime we want it, it's really nice to have that. The small amount of kale we have was a bit late and it's not enough for our greens consumption this time of the year. But down here, we've got some broccoli. It's gone pretty crazy and it's not producing a lot of actual broccoli anymore. But what it is giving us is some nice greens. The broccoli leaves are 
really tasty and nutritious, just like kale. And so if you can get them uh, nice and young, not too old, uh, then you can pick them and use them. So that's all picked about and that's why it looks like that because we've been using it for greens and not just for the broccoli. This was planted at the beginning of autumn uh, so it really got good growth on before the cold came. We also have some carrots still here and a few beetroot but otherwise there is not a lot. There's a bit of parsley, uh, some of it growing wild, the self sown around but not a lot really coming from these raised beds this time of year. I have a couple of patches of potatoes, one that I'm still digging which is the main summer crop and this one which was the autumn crop and these will need to be dug uh, probably within about three to maximum four weeks this needs to come out of the ground and go in the cellar. So there is quite a lot of food here in the form of potatoes and still plenty coming from the garden but I will not plant potatoes again until probably the very beginning of September. Uh, get the early crop in, get it underway. Food like this doesn't look much, it doesn't look very attractive, but you know that uh, the good part is still in the ground there and being in ground at this time of the year, it's the best place for it to be. So again, here in the greenhouse, there isn't a huge amount happening. There is still tomato, plants there that from the early spring planting and they don't look much but I've left them because there's still a few late tomatoes ripening. They don't really ripen that well this time of the year but there's still one or two so I, while they are there I will leave them. I could pull them out and hang them up but I really have no need yet. It's too early still for me to come and plant new plants in here. It's that won't happen until probably the end of August when it starts to warm. So still about six weeks away. There's some lettuce here uh, that I have planted and some English spinach. The English spinach is not doing much yet. It's still a bit cool, but this lettuce is coming along quite nicely. Now all of this lettuce comes from self-sown volunteer plants that have come up in these beds along with lots of chickweed. You'll find I've got lots and lots of chickweed growing around. It grows really well this time of the year and it's a fantastic green, very nutritious. When it's nice and short like this, you can come and cut it with scissors, include it in your salad and really, really good. Probably more nutritious than the lettuce. There's also a little bit of rocket uh, that's volunteered. This patch here, I planted with green manure late in autumn. You'll probably notice the colour difference from my left to my right. This is oats mixed with mustard. Now the mustard that's in here is from uh, self-sown that I had plants that went to seed and then I've just scattered that around and so that's all coming up naturally. And yes, it was oats that I sowed into that as a grain. On my right hand side here, this is all wheat. The reason the wheat went in was because I ran out of oats and I didn't have enough. But uh, I may decide to leave a row of this wheat at the top and just let it grow up to a grain across summer and see how it goes. The very top side there is fairly dry and not so useful for cropping but I will see how I go and what I decide to do a little later. It's just about reaching a stage where if you are able you would come and dig it back in or cut it. I'm going to have to wait a little bit of course to do that because it is really really wet right now. It'll probably get sized off uh, in a couple of weeks as it gets up a bit higher and then probably side the gain before it actually gets rotary hoed in which will be probably early October or somewhere around that time. Either putting areas under plastic or in green manure I think is one of the better things to do across winter 
helps control your weeds. This way, of course, you're actually getting uh, nutrition back into the soil. Though with the plastic, if you've actually got plenty of organic matter under it already, it is composting it down and feeding the worms really well. So either works depending on the situation. One of the things that I do across winter, generally June, July, ideally, occasionally it gets left to August, is to assess my seeds. But generally, it's the earlier you do it, the better chance of getting of buying any seed that you actually need because everybody else thinks like this and says, yes, I need some seed for spring. Of course, I'm also saving my own seed, as many as I can. Examples here are pumpkins, which is sweet gray pumpkin, and I save a little bit of seed from selected pumpkins, ones that are looking really nice. So seed then comes from several different pumpkins, not from the same one. Now, of course, if you're saving pumpkin seed, remember that you need to be growing only one variety and you need to not have close neighbours that might be growing something different. If you have another variety growing close, the bees will cross them up and your pumpkin won't be true. We live a fair way from neighbours and we only grow sweet grey pumpkins. And that way the seed remains quite true and consistent in terms of its product. So this year I had a look and I've bought a few seeds uh, from Southern Harvest. Now that's a company if you live in Tasmania and want to support a Tasmanian uh, company. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do quite like their seeds and their service in terms of speed is really good. So what have I bought this year? I bought some sweet corn. Uh, last year I left my sweet corn seed purchase too late and found it really difficult to get the seed that I wanted. So I've got some sweet corn there. Now I buy a super sweet, it's a hybrid. All the sweet corn that is not hybrid in Tasmania comes from hybrid varieties. It's actually been standardized to a non-hybrid. But that's just my choice. If you want to keep your own seed, of course, you need to get a non-hybrid or standardize your own from a hybrid variety. I bought some rainbow chard this year. Generally, it's Fort Hook Giant uh, silver beet that we grow. I thought I'd try something a little bit different, something more colorful. I bought a couple of cabbages. As you'll notice, there's no cabbages in my garden this winter and I really want to produce cabbages more regularly and consistently through the year, which I tend to be failing to do. So I've bought a variety for spring and another for autumn growing, and I'll experiment with those and, and see how they go across the year. One of the problems with cabbages here, well, there's two problems really. The winter one is slugs. Uh, the summer one is the cabbage white butterfly. The white butterfly is much easier stopped than the, the slugs in winter. They tend to hide in the cabbage and when you open up a cabbage and find slugs hiding in it, it doesn't really make you excited about eating it. I also purchased a couple of tomato varieties. One I was recommended by a viewer to have a go at, which was the Cherokee Purple. And the other one is Legend, which I thought I would have a go at. It is a cool climate tomato. Uh, always interested in trying something new. So if you haven't chased up your seeds yet uh, for spring, I suggest you do that. That's all for this video. And I'll be back with another video. I have no idea what it's going to be about, hopefully in a couple of weeks.